Okay, so I'm back over here and the same scene. Now, in this uh, video, we're going to go ahead and, and place some pretty easy to, uh, to create materials here just to start to shade some of these objects that are in the center of the room. So we're going to go a little bit quickly here. Uh, we're not going to do anything too, too difficult. It's basically more of the same just for this video, just to get uh, this stuff done. So let's go over here to this, uh, this countertop here and actually the sides of the countertop. Let's right click and go to assign new material. And we're going to assign an MIA material X. So let's go ahead and assign that. And first thing we need to do is change the name here. So let's call it uh, White Counter Mat. Pretty original, huh? Okay. All right, so make sure you, that you add White Counter Mat to the shading group as well with SG at the end. And let's make the color pure white. Now I'm not going to change the weight or the roughness here. Um, I want to just leave that alone at default. It's going to work pretty good. Now, let me go ahead and do an IPR here just to see what this is looking like. It's always a good idea. Okay, let me go back to the attribute editor here. I'm going to go back up the list here and turn the auto load selected attributes on. It keeps uh, turning itself on and it's extremely frustrating. Okay, so just one of those Maya things. Let's go over here to reflectivity and turn that up to 0.8, make it a little bit more reflective. Not going to mess with any of the refraction parameters or anything, so I'll collapse all this stuff. But I will go to BRDF and I'm going to make it use Fresnel reflections. So the reflections are based on the refraction, the index of refraction, which is 1.4. And what I'm going to do also, I'm going to go to ambient occlusion, turn that on. And the distance, I'm going to set a distance of 150, and I'll tell you why. I'm using the same distance that I'm using for the walls of the room, simply because it worked well for the walls of the room, and since the room isn't going to change in size, then that same distance from the walls will work pretty good for the counter here. Uh, so we can get some color bleeding from the walls and stuff like that all over the room. So let's take the ambient shadow color, knock that all the way to black. Let's also turn on color bleed over here for the detail distance parameter. And you can see it's already looking really good. It has that nice indirect illumination look to it. Now I could increase this ambient light color if I wanted to. And it does brighten it up, which looks pretty good. But for the moment, I'm going to keep it black. And if later I don't like it, I can always come back and change it. So it's not, it's not a problem. So let me close that attribute editor window. So the counter right there is done. Let me go back and do a new IPR. Let's come in here. Let's uh, sort of zoom in here a bit. And now what we have to do is the material for these uh, ceramic tiles. So let's right click on the ceramic tiles, go to assign new material, and we'll assign another MIA material X. And this scene is almost completely comprised of that material, the material X, architectural material, which is really good. Let's call this ceramic tiles, Matt. Probably guessed I was going to use that name because I'm so original. Okay. All right, so uh, let's change some colors and things here. Let me redo that IPR. And before I actually do an IPR, let me go ahead and open up my color chooser here. Okay, let me switch from HSV to RGB. And let's just go ahead and input these colors, which, uh, which I'm okay with. Of course, you can put in whatever colors you want. So we're going to go... For a red value of 0.84, green 0.85, and the blue is going to be just uh, maxed out of 1. So we're going to end up with this sort of pale lavender color. And you can go for whatever color you want. If you want to make it green, if you want to make it yellow, hey, go for it. Um, it's whatever you want it to be. So now that that's done, let's do a quick uh, little render region here with the IPR just to see what we have. Okay, not too bad. Let's go to the reflection parameters. Uh, the reflectivity is a little bit low. I, I want this to be a little bit uh, more reflective, so I'll go to 0.8. Now those reflections look like perfect mirror reflections. You can see the vase here being reflected on here, almost like this thing's a mirror. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some glossiness to it to add some blur. So I'm going to add about 0.6 for the glossiness. And you can see already the, uh, the reflection doesn't look like a mirror anymore. It's, it's a little bit, uh, little bit blurred out which looks more uh, more realistic okay now when we do our final render we will have to increase these glossy samples here you can see it's by default set to 8 now 8 is just a default setting designed to render fast but it's not uh, not the setting you want to use for 
for final production render. So you always want to remember to come back and increase that setting at the end. You just don't want to do that now, obviously, because your uh, render time is going to shoot through the roof. Okay, so refractions, I'm going to keep all this stuff the same. Let me collapse refre uh, reflections there into views. Now, BRDF, I'm going to go ahead and turn on use Fresnel reflections so that it's uh, so it works a little bit more realistically. And that about is going to do it. I don't want to use ambient occlusion, and I'll tell you why. If something in our scene doesn't really need to use this ambient occlusion feature, then you should turn it off. The reason being, every shader that's using this ambient occlusion is going to slow down your render time uh, by that much. So if you have, say, 10 shaders at the end of the scene, and all 10 are using this ambient occlusion feature, you're going to have a slow render. But if you're able to optimize a bit, and give and take a little bit and say you got 10 shaders but only four of them are using ambient occlusion or the least amount of them are using ambient occlusion your renders are gonna go twice as fast or maybe even faster so it's something to take into consideration so in this case for the sake of optimization and speed I won't be turning on ambient occlusion for specific shaders in this case this shader I don't feel that it needs it so uh, so I'm not gonna use it so let me close that let me also close the IPR and if we come in here this object here is actually a separate object. Uh, those are kind of these lines that go in between the ceramic tiles, the grout, so to speak. I believe that's what it's called. Um, if not, you can check out a Home Depot catalog and try to find out. Go to your local Home Depot hardware store and try to find out what that is. So uh, with that uh, object selected there, let me zoom out a little bit. I'll right-click, go to Sign New Material, and let's assign a Material X. Same thing, same deal. Okay, so for the diffuse, let's go ahead and make that pure white. I'll leave the weight at 1 is fine. Roughness, um, I think I might add a little bit of roughness because that is supposed to be a pretty rough material, that material that goes in between the tiles. So maybe I'll add about uh, 0.1 to the roughness, not too much. It's probably not even going to make much of a difference, to be honest with you. Now, obviously, we don't want any reflection with this material. It's not supposed to be a reflective material, so we'll take uh, reflections off. Because there's no reflectivity, we don't have to worry about these Fresnel reflections because there are no reflections. The only other thing I'm going to do is turn on that ambient occlusion parameter here. Because I believe that if I go ahead and, and do a render here, I'm not going to do an IPR. My actually crashed on me not too long ago doing IPRs. So I'm trying to stay away from that. So let's turn ambient occlusion off, do render region. That's how it looks. We'll turn on ambient occlusion render region and it looks virtually the same okay so what we need to do is probably increase this distance maybe I'll use a distance of uh, 150 like I did for the walls and that counter not making much of a difference there let's turn on color bleed here okay yeah now that made a difference using the color bleed looks pretty good and it really doesn't add too much render time simply because it's such a simple object and it's very small and uh, so I guess it just renders out faster excellent okay let's also rename the material that's one thing that I forgot to do from the beginning here so let's call this crowd mat oops it's not how you spell mat it's not ma not grandma so let's copy that name paste it over here hit enter there we go so that material is set up let's close that okay Next, let's go ahead and set up this uh, this wine bottle material over here. So I'll right click, go to sign new material. Let's go to MIA material X again. Okay, let's rename this to wine bottle. And of course, we'll change the name for the shading group here. Okay. And just so I can see how this is updating here, let's do a, a quick render here. Okay, so this is what we have so far. It's actually reflective a bit too much. Do a render region there. And let's start to uh, change some of this stuff here. What I want to do is give this a sort of dark green color. So I'm going to come over here to the color chooser and let's go for red value of about 0.2 and a green value of about 0.3 and we'll go for blue value of about 
and that gives us a nice sort of dark green color here. If I do a render region, be able to see that change. There it is. That's kind of what I want, this dark green sort of color. And for the weight, I'm going to actually let me take the weight. Let me drop that to about half. And let me also give this some roughness. Just to see what this looks like here. Do a little render region here. Not using the IP. Oh, that looks pretty nice. I like that kind of dark color. Looks a bit more realistic. Okay. So we'll go here to reflection. Now for the reflectivity, what I want to do is I probably want to make this completely reflective here. And I'm not going to give it any glossiness. If I do render region here, it's going to be a lot more reflective. There it is. Looks pretty good. I kind of like that. And uh, I am going to come down here to BRDF and tell it to use Fresnel Reflections. And for refraction here, let's go for refraction of 1.7, which I believe is a value that I found on the internet while researching uh, index of refraction, indices of refraction for different types of glass materials. And actually, that looks really cool. I really like that. It's looking really nice. Okay, and let's also scroll down here for the ambient occlusion parameters. Let me collapse some of this stuff here. For ambient occlusion, I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. And let me just use the default settings here and see what I get. Not, uh, not really any difference. Let's turn on color bleeding here. And for the distance, well, let's leave the distance off for the moment. Let's see. Let's do another render there. And we don't really see uh, much of a difference here. Okay. So I might actually end up just turning the ambient occlusion off. Now I could increase the distance, but again, it's one of those situations where I'm kind of trying to balance out, you know, is the render, is the hit that I'm taking at render speed, the render uh, slowdown, worth the ambient occlusion effect on this bottle? And I'm starting to think that, no, it might not be. Later, I might change my mind and, and come back and change that anyway. But for the moment, I'm going to go ahead and leave it like that because, as you can see, when I do render regions, it doesn't seem to be making uh, much of a difference, if at all. So I'm, I'm starting to think that it may not even be worth the added render time to give that material any ambient occlusion at all. Okay, so let me close that. Now let me come over here and actually, let me go back to, okay, good kind of forgot there for a moment if I had to rename the material. Sorry about that. So I'll go over here to the uh, to the cap over here, the cap uh, object here for the uh, for the wine bottle. Let's assign a new material. Again, I'm just going to go off on MI material X as usual. And let's give this, let's call this, I guess for lack of originality again, wine cap mat or wine cap material. Okay. Okay. So now with this new material, let's go over here to the diffuse parameter and let's go ahead and open up the color chooser. I'm going to switch to HSV just so I only have to control the uh, the value parameter here, which is by default set at 0.5. This is a just a black material. So what I'm going to do is put this to about 0.2. Editor, there's uh, some madman driving around the city flaring their, their horn all over the place and you can hear a uh, well yeah you can hear cops going after him I don't, don't know what's up with that guy I guess he's uh, trying to fight for his right to honk his horn freely or something who knows okay it appears to have passed so starting again in three two one so let's go ahead and change the color here so I'll open up the color uh, make sure you switch over to HSV because I just want to change the value parameter here since this object's just going to be a black object no point in changing the RGB when we can just change the, the value here. So I'll go from default 0.5 to about 0.2. Hit accept. Now for the weight, I'm going to go for a nice mix of 0.5 for the weight and 0.5 for the roughness. Now for the reflection, I'm going to take this reflectivity and knock it down pretty low. I don't want this object to be too reflective, but I do want it to have a little bit of shininess to it. And uh, no glossy reflections. We don't really need it here. Uh, refraction, I'm going to leave a lot at the default settings. Now the BRDF, I'm going to force it to use Fresnel Reflections. And ambient occlusion, let me see here. Let me do a quick uh, quick render here. And actually, I'll just do a render region. Let's just do a render region here, since it'll be a, a lot faster. Okay. 
I don't think I want to use ambient occlusion with this object. Now it's a bit dark, but that's okay. I'm not going to use ambient occlusion. It's just going to be a waste of added render time. So, uh, so I won't add any ambient occlusion to that. Now, the last thing I want to go ahead and put a shader on in this video is this sort of little little pot here, sort of teapot looking thing. Okay. So let's right click and let's go to assign new material and we'll go to material X as usual. Okay. So let's come up here and rename this material as always. And I'm just going to call this the teapot uh, mat. There we go. I guess that works out, right? And we're going to go down here, paste the name for the shading group. Okay. So for the uh, color, you can make it any color that you want, really. I'm going to go with just the default white. So I'm going to max out that slider and make that white. And for the weight, I'm going to leave the weight and the roughness alone at the default parameters. And uh, for the reflection, I want this to be completely reflective, almost like glass. So I'll give it reflectivity of 1. No glossiness because I want this to be a pretty clean uh, surface. And uh, I'm not going to mess around with the advanced reflection parameters. Let me collapse all this stuff. Now the BRDF, I'm going to force it to use Fresnel reflections. Looks a lot nicer. And let's actually come in here. Let's do a render of this. Okay, so this is what it looks like right now. I'm going to do a render region here. I'm going to turn on the ambient occlusion parameter here. And I'm going to increase, or maybe I'll leave this distance uh, parameter alone. Let's turn on the color bleeding there. Now let's leave it with the default settings and see what we get. If we get something good, we'll leave it alone. If not, we'll change it. And uh, that actually doesn't look too bad. I like how the color bleeding is coming up right here in the bottom, if you see, from the blue ceramic tiles that are just under it. So I'm going to leave it alone like this for the moment. If I want to, I can always come back and change it. But for the moment, I'm just going to leave it alone. Okay, say that I'm happy with that. Okay, so most of the stuff in the middle of the room has uh, has now been shaded and surfaced using the Hypershade and, and Maya. Okay, so I'm going to end this video here. And in the next video, we're going to go ahead and talk about... Uh, we're going to talk about tone mapping. Yeah, that's what we'll do in the next video. We'll talk about tone mapping. If you don't know what that is, then you're going to learn in the next video. If you do, you're going to see how to do it in, uh, in Maya pretty easily using a specific mentor ray shader design for tone mapping. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.